So it may turn out to be the best $300 I ever spent, or maybe not. But I'd been looking all over the place for somebody, a forester, a logger of some kind to come out to our property and maybe do a select cut, inform me on what they would do, ask the right questions, that kind of thing. And I have had a huge struggle trying to find somebody who is, well, I mean, let alone recommended, but even just find somebody online that would answer a call or seem like they're reputable. I just can't find this information out there. So here we are turning to you folks out there to maybe shed some more light on the subject for me and for others that are in the same boat. Now I'm in the West Michigan area, so this is of course a bit uh, geographically relevant depending on where you're at and, and prices and whoever might be able to do it is gonna depend on that too. But we had a forester come out. Well, let me back up at the beginning of the story. I had, um, I wanted some firewood out here. We've been cutting a lot of firewood, but it needs to season still. And the fire we had here is, is just kind of rotted and, and not good. So I wanted some seasoned firewood so we could use in the fireplaces and fire pit and so on and so forth. I paid a bit extra. This guy's firewood says he had it seasoned indoors, uh, inside and recovered for two years. Uh, it's all cherry, uh, really nice stuff. And uh, 300 bucks delivered for a cord. There were some others that were, I feel like 200 to 250 even for other seasoned firewood. Um, I paid a bit of a premium to go with this guy. Now, that's gonna be a whole other video where uh, Hometown Acres said that they can get more than that per cord in their area, I think in Pennsylvania, if I remember right. But um, point being, I just had a good feeling about these guys. So anyway, uh, really professional, came over, filled up two truck beds and, and delivered it to me for 300 bucks. We just got to talking, you know, and they had had their land logged by this forester, by this logger and uh, recommended them. They said they did a great job, felt that they were really trustworthy, honest, gave them a good price. And so I contacted them and they came out within a week or two and uh, we started walking the property and he started asking questions and trying to get a feel for how much time I wanted to invest in this process. Um, if I wanted to really maximize the value out of it, if I wanted to kind of just take it all, if I wanted to you know, do something every so often, you know, every 10 years or so. and. Um, he seemed like he knew what he was doing. Now to me, the part that's kind of crazy about this business, the logging business, I guess, that I don't really understand, I can't wrap my head around it, is the amount of time that this gentleman invested to put together a quote. He came out there the day that he met us, and I believe, I have to go look at my text messages, but I'm pretty sure he came out four other days to walk the property, identify the trees, the logs that they would want to take out and put together a quote. And this was all unpaid time, and he didn't live next door. He lived, I think, about an hour away to make a commute and do that on four different occasions. And so anyways, after he did all that, he gave his formal quote, I guess. It's just on a piece of paper, notebook paper, written with the quantity of trees and the type of tree, no sizes on there, and a total lump sum value. And now I can tell you that I believe, what do you say, Chris? They take 24-inch minimum. Is that, you remember him saying that? It was a good sized tree. Like there was a lot of them they pointed out they need more time basically, you know? So there's gonna be a, a minimum that's gotta be worth their while to go through the process of cutting it down and dragging it out and loading it up and hauling it away. And I feel like it was 24 inches. There might've been some variation there, but substantially sized trees, you know, they can't be all crooked and wonky and everything else. You know, all the things that I, I think at least on a high level, I understand what goes into a quality piece of, uh, of, of lumber, but I've never had property logged. I don't know anybody that really has uh, directly that I can go to and, and get a recommendation. Um, so I have no idea if I'm being taken or if this is a good deal or I just don't have any clue. And so that's where I need a bit of an education. I can't, I just, I don't know why. Why is it so hard to find this information online? I can't, I can't find it from other local foresters around here. I can't find it in, in good YouTube video references or blogs or forums or anything else. And I know there's a lot of variables, right? You know, you're, the area you're in, the types of trees, the amateur trees, all, all sorts of stuff that goes into it, the market um, and everything else. But I'm really struggling with this and I don't, I'm tempted to say, yeah, let's go ahead and do it and get on the schedule and, and get it done because it's a nice chunk of cash that I could use, right? Part of me feels like I may regret it though too, right? You know, like as soon as I get it done, well then something's gonna pop out of the woodwork where, you know, there's some magical way I could have got a lot more money out of this too. And, you know, Chris and I had a, a not very serious conversation about, well, what if we did all this ourselves, right? Cut them all down, got a mill, dried them, all that kind of thing. But the amount of time that that would all take, the investment that would all take, the property's not near to me either. It's about 40, 45 minutes away too. So 
you know, there's a lot of time invested there too when I can't be doing other things. And uh, me also not being a logger, right? That's not gonna be very smooth sailing for me either. So um, anyway, what would you guys do? What do you think about the number? Do you have any other loggers that are in this area I could talk to? Where do I go from here? Chris says I haven't actually given you the number. So what the number is, the total was 33,350. And so I said, is that number negotiable? I came in at 36,000. Anyways, the point being we settled at 34,750. That's where it's at right now. And you have 229 trees, roughly half of them are oaks, 64 red oaks, 50 black oaks, 34 soft maple, black cherry, 29, 18 poplars, 15 hickories, only five black walnuts, eight white oaks, four hard maples, two basswood. So basically that comes out to 151 bucks a tree, which I don't really think that, yeah, certain trees are worth more and other trees are worth less, so I get that, but that's just an average at least. Uh, some other way to view it besides a total lump sum. But um, it just doesn't seem like a lot for a tree, you know? And, you know, there's a lot of other processes and time and equipment and labor and transportation that goes into it and profit and everything else. So uh, I kind of get it from owning a business and going through manufacturing, right? A different perspective. Um, but I still feel, I don't know, kind of that queasy feeling in my stomach if I go to pull the trigger. So fill me in. What do we need to know? Send me some links. Give me some other angles, maybe other questions to ask before I pull the trigger. Again, maybe this was the best 300 bucks ever spent on that cord of firewood, or maybe it just turns into nothing. At this point, I don't have anything invested into it. Again, for me, thinking of this as a business prospect for a logging company, I can't imagine investing that amount of time with no guaranteed return. I mean, that's that's so much, that's almost a week. That's four days out of a week, you know, worth of labor just to do one quote. And that 34,750 is not all profit. There's a lot of, a lot of costs that's, that's in there, right? Maybe even if they're making 30% profit for all that time that's been invested already and all that time that will be invested, that's crazy to me. It's an interesting business. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden, we're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. So for me though, this is a fun thing to go through. You know, when you buy a property, it's it's, it's cool to think about that that asset that's there that's uh, that's almost hiding in plain sight, right? And there's just money that's sitting there growing. You're not doing it. I'm not nurturing that property right now. And and they did mention things like if I want to clear out all the underbrush and you know trim out all the scrubby stuff and let the good the good trees really grow up and sprout. But man, all the vines and everything else that's in there. I mean, the amount of labor that I would spend to do that. If I lived there, maybe chipped away at it after work or on the weekends, sure. But I'm nowhere near there and that's more time than I want to invest. So what do you think? Where should I go from here? Let me know in a comment down below. If you did enjoy today's video, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button down below completely free. Now, if you're in the market for a tractor attachment, that's what we sell here. That's the main point of this channel. So we'd love to help you out. See what we have to offer at goodworkstractors.com. Includes free shipping, rewards, and financing too. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.